Okay, question four. Uh, briefly, uh, describe briefly one scattering experiment to investigate the size of the nucleus of the atom. Include a description of the properties of the incident radiation which make it suitable for this experiment. In your answer, you should make clear how evidence for the size of the nucleus follows from your description. Uh, I should point out that this question came from the older spec where you need to know a second uh, experiment, but in your spec we only need to know about the one. So I'm going to have to make my pen a little bit smaller. Let's go for that. Okay, and I did say in the question that a decent little diagram would be useful, labelled up, so we'll start off with that. So, um, well, starting, we're talking about the alpha scattering experiment, or the Rutherford scattering, as it's otherwise known. And I'm just going to draw a diagram. So what we have is here we'll have a radium source or just a source of alpha particles so alpha source we would have gold foil or thin gold foil it's probably around about uh, it's about 10,000 atoms thick and we would have a detector now the original Marsden experiment and Geiger when they did it it was waiting for the alpha particles to strike a phosphorescent screen and they were looking through it. However, a Geiger, if you were to talk about a Geiger counter being at this angle with some kind of a collimator, that would be fine, but we'll just call it a detector. Now, because these are alpha particles inside this uh, thing, uh, the alpha particles wouldn't be able to get through the air because a few centimetres of air, they would be absorbed. So we'll also say that this has to be as uh, under vacuum. Okay. And if we, let's, let's just go to a different colour because we appreciate my, my diagram is a little small. So what we would say is we would have most of our particles would go through. However, some would bounce back very, very rarely. So I'd actually draw most of them passing straight through the gold foil. And every now and again, like I said, one, one bounces back. So let's get on with the actual description. Uh, particles have little deflection. And there's, if, if most have a little deflection, then a very small number or very few deflect with a very large uh, deflection. Why is it that they deflect? Well, the reason they're deflecting is because they're... Um, our alpha particles are positively charged, so positive alphas are scattered by the positive nucleus. Uh, it also says in the Mark scheme that if you could, the reason we have that is due to Coulomb's law. You can have another mark for that. Positive nucleus, and if we say, well, the reason they, that they are is because they're being repelled. And the, another really, really important point why we want to use um, alpha particles is because during an alpha decay, they all come out with the same energy. So we, we can therefore use that, the amount that they scatter back. Uh, because we know that they're all moving at exactly the same speed as each other when they come out, we can therefore, that allows us to look into detail about the size of the nucleus. So all have the same energy. Okay, now as we can see up in this question, we've got to make clear how this evidence for the size of the nucleus follows from our description. Um, so the fact that there are only a very few tells us, so 
only a few scatter back. Tells us that the nucleus must be very small. So let's go with the word tiny in comparison to the atom. And because they bounce back, it's because they're being repelled. So because they're scattered backwards, so let's call it large scattering, the nucleus is positive charge. Lovely.